you might have been writing down some await keywords with your future functions. However, you might think, why await? But before I explain to you the reason why, let's understand where does this await keyword comes from. Well, it comes from this concept called asynchronous programming. So let me give you an example of how you might implement it in your app. So you have two functions, the fetch book function and the read book function. Well, the fetch book function is a function that fetches a book from the database. And with the book you have fetched, it will be able to read the book using the read book function and display it in the app. Therefore, we want the fetch book function to run first and then the read book function to run after the fetch book function once it's done. These two functions take an average of 2 seconds and 1 second to finish executing respectively. If you were to just do normal programming, then if you were to run your app with a function, which one do you think will execute first? The fetch book function or the read book function? Well, if you said fetch book function, you are wrong. It is actually the read book function. This is because it only takes one second to execute while the fetch book function takes two seconds. So this will happen after one second has passed. So after two seconds, then the fetch book function will complete its execution. Even if the fetch book function has finished its execution, it still has an error inside your app. So this is typically called the race condition, where the execution is not what we expected and these cause bugs. Who likes bugs? Birds, not programmers. Therefore, asynchronous programming is needed in this situation. So the async or asynchronous in short is represented as the bright blue arrow. Now let's see what happens if we were to run the app. Now you can see that the fetch book function is running first or after a successful fetching of a book, then the read book function is activated. And now you can see the text on your phone, which describes async programming, which lets your software complete its work while waiting for another operation to finish first. Therefore, how do we then do async programming? So let's give a simple example of creating three seconds in programming. Yes, three seconds. Let's say we have a function that is called say hello after three seconds. And this function has two print statements, start and hello. So we want to have three seconds of delay in between the start and hello statement, meaning that the print statement, it will say start after three seconds, then the word hello will be printed. So how do we do a delay? Well, we are going to use this concept or object called the future. So future is basically an operation that execute successfully or not successfully. For a future, there is this delayed method that allows us to have a delay of three seconds using a duration object. So now what we expect is when a function is run, the start statement will be printed out. Then after three seconds, the statement hello will be printed out after. So let's see this in the actual code or Dart pad. If you want to follow along, there is the link just below. So inside our Dart pad over here, we have the say hello after three seconds function, the two print statements, and also the future delayed object with the duration three seconds. And then we also call this say hello function inside our main method and see whether the hello will run after three seconds. So let's run this and see in the console. In a blink of an eye, there actually isn't any delayed. So the console actually printed out the word start and the word hello at the same time or without the three seconds delay. So the future did not wait at all. So how do we then make the future wait? Well, use the word 
literally await. So let's go to our Dart pad and insert the word await. So type in the word await just before the word future. And now you can see there is an error at the bottom right hand corner. And it says the await expression can only be used in an async function. So this means that this function is not async or asynchronous. So how do we create an asynchronous function? Well, you add in the word async or the keyword async just right after the bracket and before the curly brackets. So let's add it in our Dart pad and in between this space over here, just right after our colon and before our curly brackets, we were going to type the word async. And now let's run this and, and see whether the hello will print out after three seconds. So you can see the word start and then you can see the word hello printed out after three seconds. Congratulations! Now you know how to use the future and why we should use the word await and using this async or asynchronous function. Well, with this new knowledge, I'm going to give you a challenge. So, if I were to copy this say hello after three seconds and then paste it over here, what we will expect is that the first function will run, so it will print out start and it will print out hello. Once the first function is done, then the second function should run and it will print out the start and the hello according to what we have over here. So, if we were to run this, we all know that this doesn't really work. So it will just print out the start first. After three seconds, the hello will print out after. So then how do we then convert this expected result into this expected result that we have? Pause this video and do it. All right. So this is something that I have not taught in this video. So you know that this future can only be awaited. So how do we then make this function a future? Well, what you can do is type in the word future and then we will make this as a type of void. So now you have a function that returns a future where the future is just returning a void type. So nothing is being returned. So with the future, that means we can add in the word await. So let's copy this await keyword and then paste it and put a space. Same goes over here. Now you know that the await requires the word async. So that means we can insert this async keyword inside our main method. Do you think there is any errors? Actually, there isn't. So that means this main method can be asynchronous. So now if we were to run this, do you think we will expect this result? Let's find out. So you can see the start has printed out and then the word hello and then the start immediately printed out and then the word hello has printed out. Congratulations if you have found out the solution to the challenge. So in summary, we know how to create a future function that is asynchronous using the await keyword and the async keyword. And now we know that the main method can actually be a asynchronous function. So let's get back to the question at the start. Why await? Well, the better question is why in synchronous? Well, this is because we can only focus on one thing at a time. That's about it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want more of this video, subscribe down below and comment down of any concept that you want me to go through next. Stay safe and all the best. Bye bye.